Hey everybody, I'm Tim, and this one's for the ages. And you're watching Cigars Daily. Hey, get more out of all our content when you join the community on Cigars Daily Plus. There is so much to love about the world of premium cigars. There's this amazing community that it creates when you sit down in a lounge and hang out with other like-minded people and solve all the world's problems only to do nothing about it. There's also the incredible flavor that comes out of these blends, handcrafted blends put together to deliver such a good profile and so many different profiles in every cigar out there. But Perhaps one of my favorite things about cigars is that they're low hanging fruit and an easy grab at the luxury lifestyle for every adult out there. This is a beautiful thing because there's so many parts of the luxury world that most of us will never ever see. I think a lot about these snooty snoot wine snobs and their big fancy wine collections. They've got cellars and rooms they go into with racks of wine that they'll never drink, but they just like to cultivate these collections and they like to age them and look at them and talk about them and it's so good and you put your pinky up and whatever. But with cigars, there's actually a little bit of crossover into this. It's part of that luxury lifestyle thing. And when it comes to premium cigars, like some similar things you can do, you want to grow a collection and cultivate it. And aging is a big thing that comes through with this. Like a lot of people like to take cigars and age them to get a little bit better results out of them. And in this video, I'm going to take you through that because I actually got a great email this week with a question about this very topic. So for this video, I just lit up Drew Estate Nica Rostica Broadleaf. This is an amazing everyday smoke that's reasonably priced. They come in around like $7 a stick, depending on the size. But also, it's a perfect cigar that stands to benefit from a little bit of aging. And that's what I want to take you through. There's a lot of blends out there that if you get them for six, seven, maybe eight bucks a stick, and you want them to smoke more like a $10 cigar, you can do that with aging that starts out at as little as maybe three or four months in a well-maintained like humidor. You're going to find some incredible results. And so here's what you get from aging. And this is a really big deal. When it comes to a cigar, especially, and I think the more affordable stuff and some of the simpler cigars, you find that aging is going to give you a little bit more refinement and flavor. Really aging in a lot of ways is about decomposition. As the leaves inside the wrapper, binder, and filler break down a little bit over time, and they do this naturally, they're going to start to meld and blend flavors in the profile. You'll even find that some of those little imperfections that might come through in some cigars, like bitterness or tartness, will sort of settle down and age themselves right away. It's a really cool thing about cigars. You get a a profile that's a little bit more refined that's even maybe better for pairing with your snobby snob wines or more likely a scotch or a bourbon and so in this video i'm going to take you through some of these but first let me ask you this have you aged cigars on your own drop a comment down below have you had any luck with this and tell everybody how you've done it and what's worked really well for you because i know the guys and gals in the cigars daily nation have had a lot of amazing experience here and especially chris i want to talk to chris because he sent me this email he asked this incredible question and it really turns itself back to aging he says i have some cigars that are 20 plus years old. A few are in aluminum single cigar canisters, which are also called tubos. None of them have been kept in a humidor. I'll pause for your cringe. Can I put them in a humidor with newer cigars to revive them? Okay, so this is where we dive into the world of aging cigars and what it really takes to get a well-aged cigars. And at the end, we'll see what kind of hope Chris actually has for his 20 plus year aged cigars. All right, so to kick this whole thing off, you wanna think about the type of cigar that you'd wanna age in a humidor. And this is a really big deal because there are some cigars that quite frankly are not gonna benefit from this. If you get a high-end, like really well-done cigar that's already been aged, probably aging it is not going to give you much better of a result than you'd get if you lit it up right after you got it. Some wrap reliefs already come with ages of like five years on them. Some is 10 years. I've even seen some cigars like 1502's XO, which has got 18 year aged leaf in the blend. 
So these are the type of cigars that you're going to age them a little bit longer and it's really like you're just spending your time at that point. You're not actually doing any better for yourself. You might as well get the thing for a special occasion and smoke it on that special occasion. So I'm usually looking for something a little more like the Nica Rustica, like a cigar that's a good everyday cigar. You would happily smoke it when you get it, but also if you leave it in the humidor for a little while, it's going to get a little bit better, measurably better, like to the point where you'd notice it. You can literally smoke one of these when you get it, throw one in the humidor, take notes as you smoke the first one, and then a few months later, take some more notes and get a measurable difference between the two. Now, there's a lot of cigars out there of just about every different wrapper type that are going to benefit from aging, and really, as you smoke cigars, eventually, you're going to learn to taste this. You see, within the massive ocean of different flavors that you'll taste in a cigar, as you smoke, your palate's gonna learn to pick out flavors that you don't really like as much. Like, I hear a lot of guys talk about this with premium cigars. They'll come in and be like, oh yeah, I really like that cigar, Tim, but it tastes a little bit young to me. And there certainly is a sense where you can tell the difference between a cigar that doesn't taste as well aged and one that does. And again, this comes back to a refinement of flavor. There are specific impurities and imperfections in that flavor or just a lack of refineness that you get in a cigar where there's not as much age on the leaf. So you'll learn to taste these things over time, and then you'll start to pick out cigars that you're like, man, I'd really like to see what this tastes like with a little bit more age on it, and you can get a few of them and start to age them in your humidor, but then it really all dials down to how you do this. So I already said that aging starts out at like three or four months. You're going to start to notice the difference between flavors in cigars, but aging is something you can do for an extended period of time, and this is actually something that during my time in the world of cigars, I have grown and changed a lot in my opinion of. I used to say that aging was something that really only worked best between sort of three or four months and about two years. And after two years, you're just wasting your time. But I've seen some really great examples of cigars that have been aged for much longer and still been incredible, incredible blends. And so I would say that aging, when done correctly, is something that you can do for a long period of time. I've even seen cigars aged as long as 40 years that have still had a ton of life left in them. But at the same time, I've seen cigars aged like 20 years that had no life left in them. And that's where aging really, like how you age really comes into play. There are two major factors that you gotta consider if you're gonna put some age on a cigar. The first one is temperature and the second one is humidity. And yes, these are the same things you'll think about for just regularly cultivating your daily smoke collection. Maybe you've got a desktop humidor with like 20 cigars in it that you're pulling out as you smoke over the month or two. That's fine, and you wanna regulate your humidity and your temperature. But with your daily smoking routine cigars, it doesn't matter if the temperature goes up five, seven degrees as the weather heats up or the AC kicks on and turns off. It doesn't matter if the humidity dips for a few days while you don't notice it and you're like, oh my gosh, my humidity's down. I got to get another pack in there or rehumidify it. That's all fine. Your cigars will be okay. It's really in the world of aging cigars where you have to pay close attention to this stuff. Because if you're going to age cigars for a long period of time, you really can't have too many variances with your temperature and your humidity. You really got to keep those things dialed in to within one or two percent of each other. The trick and secret to aging is consistency. Your temperature, whatever temperature you choose, maybe it's 70 degrees, maybe it's 65 degrees or something like that. You want to keep that temperature within one or two degrees pretty much all the time. So if you are like me and you're married to someone who relentlessly keeps the air conditioning blasting all the time and you just get to pay the AC bill, this is great for you because you've got a perfect environment to age your cigars. Or even better yet, maybe you've got like a refrigerated cigar humidor that actually maintains the temperature for you. You're in a great situation to start aging cigars because your temperature is already dialed in. Now, when it comes to humidity, equally as important. You've got to make sure that that humidity maintains really, really well. 
For a lot of people, they'll take their aging cigars and set them aside from their daily rotation in a place where they won't be disturbed as much. But when it comes to your humidor, you might open it a lot. And so if you're opening it a lot, sometimes it might even make sense to contain those cigars in a Tupperware inside your humidor or to keep them in another humidor altogether which might be cost prohibitive for some people. But again, remember your whole goal here is to dial in humidity to the point where it's not raising or lowering too much, which sort of happens a lot if you open the damn humidor too much. Okay, so we've chatted a little bit about temperature and humidity and keeping those things dialed in. And for that reason, the type of humidor that you use is really going to matter. I don't really recommend trying to age cigars in a wooden desktop humidor. They're fine humidors and they look good and for your daily stash, that's probably a great place to keep them. But if you're gonna be aging cigars, you want to have the control for temperature and humidity that you need to keep it consistent over a long period of time. That's why I really recommend those refrigerated uh, cigar humidors or Tupperware. If you live in a place where your temperature's not jumping up and down, Tupperware does an amazing job of holding humidity. Acrylic humidors are also a great solution if you want to age your cigars. Regardless of what type of container you choose, again, it comes back to those two basic rules, temperature and humidity, get them dialed in and then keep them exactly where you want them for as long as you can or as long as you plan on aging the cigars. And now I wanna come back to Chris's question about his 20 plus year age cigars where some of them have been kept in tubos and presumably some of them not. He's asking about putting them in a humidor to revive them. And this is really where you, you dial in what aging is about. You see, I mentioned aging is about the deterioration or the, the decomposition of your cigars. At the same time, as the cigar sort of starts to decompose, you also want to maintain the oils in the wrapper leaf on the outside. That's why consistency and temperature and humidity is such an important thing. It also helps you avoid things like tobacco beetles and mold. But with Chris's collection, and I emailed him to tell him this, it seems like he might not be in a great place. 20 plus year age cigars that sound like they're at this point pretty well dried out will have lost a lot of the oils that are in the wrapper leaf on the outside. At that point, bringing them back is basically gonna be like smoking a popcorn fart. There's just not a lot left to offer you once the oils in that wrapper leaf are gone. I've even done this. I've done a video on smoking a 20 plus year aged uh, Monte Cristo, I think, but it didn't get great treatment over those 20 years. You can watch that video on Cigars Daily Plus, but it was something that actually destroyed my faith in long-term aging of cigars. Really, at this point, I think it was more because that cigar didn't get great treatment. Uh, at the same time, I more recently smoked a 40-year aged Davidoff that blew my mind because the flavors were still very vivid and the profile was just absolutely perfectly blended together. Lots of refinement in that flavor, like that really crisp, clear, clean flavor, like if you're a Scotch person and you're gonna go get like the Macallan 12-year, which I think is better than the 18 year. It's better than just regular Macallan and measurably so because of that nice refinement, the removal of like the parts of the flavor that cause you to like get the fire in your belly or like the, the flame in your throat. This is something that like is a huge deal when it comes to flavors in a cigar because when you get to that refinement, you still have to have flavor. My concern for Chris is that his 20 plus year age cigars might not have a ton to offer. But I'll tell you this, when it comes to Chris, I told him in an email, I said, you should absolutely go for it. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing about your cigars is that they rock your world. That's all that matters. If you've got a 20 plus year age cigar in a tubo that hasn't really been humidified and you throw it in a humidor for a few months and light it up and enjoy the thing, that's all that matters. That's like the only thing that matters. Like what anybody else tells you doesn't really mean a single lick. It's just what impresses your palate. And that's the thing that I love about cigars. There's a lot of wine snooty snoots out there that would tell you that wine is good or wine is bad for this reason or that. When it comes to premium cigars, man, it's about you doing your thing the way that you wanna do it. And so when you age cigars, there's a couple of things to shoot at. Your temperature, your humidity, where you contain the cigars, give it a little bit of time, somewhere around the four month mark, and then see what you get. You might find that there's a flavor there or a profile with an extra refinement that you didn't get right when you pick the thing up. And 
then it's worth investing a little bit of time into cultivating cigars to get them just where you like them so they please your palate the most. Or you might be like a lot of people. You go to the cigar shop, you grab a few cigars, you light them up and you enjoy them right there and you don't go through all the hassle of aging. Maybe you got a humidor at home, you keep a few cigars in there and those are the ones you really like and you like them just the way you are. I will say this, a lot of cigar makers go to a lot of trouble to get these cigars like perfect out the gate. Like they want you to be able to enjoy them right away because they want to make more and they want to fill your humidor with more. That's kind of the recipe for the whole thing. And so they're motivated to make the cigars good right away. So if you don't want to like concern yourself with the aging thing, you don't have to. But I'll tell you, there's something special for your palate and finding a flavor you like making it a little bit better and getting even more enjoyment out of it. So I'll ask you again to drop a comment down below. Have you attempted the aging thing and what's worked for you? Give your experience there. And if you guys are looking for more on cigar aging, check down below this video. And of course, join the community on Cigars Daily Plus. Thanks again for watching. This is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily and I will see you in the comments.